Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make your own electroformed feather pendant. Now, quick disclaimer, it's not using an actual bird feather, it's using a like resin feather. There will be links to the molds and casting material that I use down below, um, but it's basically kind of covering a resin feather. Uh, in this like really thick copper plating that builds up into some cool like patterns and textures and stuff if you leave it in at the higher ampage but we'll talk about more more about that in a bit um i will be posting so these up for sale as well as some for you to wire wrap yourself onto my etsy again links down below and don't worry if you're not so much into electro forming but you like wire wrapping things stay tuned to the end of the video and i'll show you how to wire wrap this shape that way they're really durable by the way um <laughs> that way if you decide to make or buy one you can go ahead and wire wrap it in this style so that being said before i throw more stuff on the ground let's go ahead and get started <laughs> so here i'm starting off using smoothcast 325 you can use whatever kind of resin you want though but i'm starting by pouring out uh, part A, putting in just a few drops of alcohol ink because I actually make the base for this project with the leftover resin from other projects. So I get that alcohol ink mixed in pretty thoroughly and then add part B. Um, this, this stuff has like a two and a half minute pot life and it is not kidding. So I get the part B added in, mix it up quick, pour my project, and then the last little bit that I can actually feel getting hot in my hand uh, through the mixing cup. Um, as I pour it into the mold for the feathers. Now, I'm using an assortment of emery files here, uh, very generously gifted to me by my friend Jim. Hey, Jim! Uh, <laughs> and I, my favorite is probably this one that's half round. It's rounded on one side and flat on the other. And I'm just going to go through, I've already trimmed off any like overflow from the feathers, and I'm just going through using the flat side... Uh, like the way it's positioned right here the flat side is towards me and that it gives a nice like more realistic shaping to the feathers and just going in on the pattern or you know on the uh, design from the mold and kind of cutting out little recesses where the resin's thinner and it just makes sense to have a cut into the uh into the resin itself and then I'm using this is a like a triangle file and just, I really like the emery files because I feel like it's more efficient for how I like to move. <laughs> and then here you can see a little bit more how I'm coming through, just filing away, opening those spaces up. With the electroforming, uh, a lot of these spaces will kind of fill in a little bit, but you'll see how it comes out. It gives us a really great spot to do, um, the, you know, for the patina to settle whenever we do the antiquing later. And now, after we've cleaned up all of our edges and everything, I'm going through with this graphite spray lubricant that was also very generously gifted to me, but it is perfect for stuff like this. You can see just with a very quick spray, um, it's capturing all of the detail, very even coverage. I let this dry, it takes like five minutes, flip it over, do the other side, and uh, it's perfectly conductive and just no brush strokes. It's so nice. Now here I am using uh, parawire. It's 20 gauge, I believe, and but this is bare parawire. It doesn't have any of that, uh, you know, non-tarnish coating on it. And you could do any assortment of decorative wire wrapping here at this stage. Just keep in mind, it's going to build up on the wire, uh, the electroforming process will, and so it'll modify things a bit, but it's a really great process to experiment with. Now here, I am wrapping the excess wire. I used about, you know, 10 to 12 inches of it. Um, wrapping it around just a chopstick, a wooden chopstick, and then submerging it into the Electroform solution and uh, hooking on the little electrical thingy. And you can see I just have a big old honking <laughs> copper pipe um, put into the solution, and that's what, is it anode and diode? I can never remember. It's what the red ones attach to. And I've gone ahead and turned on my uh, rectifier. It's by Tech Power, and this is I, I do it about one volt in about you know half an amp, 
if I want a slow, smooth build, but my favorite is closer to 2 volts if I can manage it, and almost, you know, a full amp, eight or, like 0.8 or 0.9 of an amp to get a really bumpy, gnarly texture. So, uh, this was actually the next day I pulled it out, because I had left it on the lower setting um, for like 12 hours, and then I bumped it up to get a little bit of texturing. But, uh, that's entirely up to you. Bumping the camera a bit. Here I'm dunking it into a water baking soda solution. Um, just to wash off the electroforming solution so I can handle it. Now at this point, I'd still like wash my hands before eating or putting contacts in or something. But just be more careful than I am, I guess is what I'm saying. And you can see how much it built up on the end of the uh, wire there. That was just 20 gauge. And I save all my little pieces like that. So I'm back at my workbench now, just trimming off the excess wire. And you can see already it has a little bit of discoloration going on the copper. But don't worry about that discoloration. And right now I'm going through with a file, just kind of smoothing down any big stuff. Like anything that I'm like, yeah, I definitely want this effect to be happening like rounding this off like if you have any really big pokey spots that are in a place that you're not going to want them uh, go ahead and file that off now but don't sweat the small stuff because we're popping it into this is a rotary tumbler barrel with stainless steel shot from Rio Grande and some sunscreen burnishing compound only takes a little bit you could put in a little bit more than that but you know uh, just do you so this is what it's looking like before pretty like salmon pink colored like not really super shiny copper looking and these are a couple of other pieces that I've had just kind of sitting on a shelf getting nice and weathered um, out of the electroforming bath now this one with the ammonite I've covered both faces of it the front and back with latex just like regular costume latex and then we're gonna put on the lid I use the little plastic nut there to protect my fingers from this the threading on the bolt whenever I'm putting the lid on so it's an extra step but it saves my fingertips in the long run and then tightening that down really nice and tight we don't want any leaks or anything and then here I have my rotary tumbler on a metal shelf uh, I would recommend putting it on some sort of like maybe an old cookie sheet or something that way if you do get any leaks it's not going to be leaking compound every day you know, or the, you know, <laughs> one hour later. So, honestly, though, I did tumble it for like an hour, hour and a half. And then we'll just open that back up. But, yeah, it's, you know, oops. Uh, just have however you like with the um, with your tumbler set up. But I got this one from, like, Harbor Freight. There will be links to all the different tools and materials uh, down in the video description, too, by the way. But popping that top off. Now if I had used more of the burnishing compound, uh, the water would have been a lot like foamier, but man, look at how shiny that came out. Like it really, uh, without taking away the electroforming texture, really kind of smoothed things out and brightened it up. And here you can see on these other pieces, this is also how I low-key stress test um, a lot of my electroformed pieces. If it can handle being tossed around in a tumbler, for, you know an hour and a half then it should hold up pretty decently to being worn now here you can see the latex has turned but I wanted to just even though it's not the focus of this tutorial to just do a little bit of latex peeling so you can see ah, because these same techniques that I'm using for this uh, feather you could use for like uh, a stone set in polymer clay or you know a lot of the techniques overlap but I just thought that was really cool, and I loved how that one came out. Let me know if you guys want me to, to do a tutorial on this style of piece as well. So now in a mason jar with a glass stirrer and with some hot water, uh, I've dissolved about a drop or two of this liver of sulfur gel. And I'm going to go ahead, now you could go ahead and leave this shiny, because I do really like it shiny. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what it's like if you wanted to antique it. And now you can see it's already darkening a little bit, but I wanted a very bold, dark antique. And that's, you can use cold water with the liver of sulfur, but you're going to get faster results if you, if you use a warmer water. But you don't want it, like, boiling or very, very steamy because the fumes are not good for you. 
And now to neutralize it, in another mason jar, I have some baking soda dissolved. Just stir in that again, getting it all into a nice solution. And then I'm going to just take it over from the liver of sulfur and neutralize it in the bath. And so you can see this came out very dark, which is exactly what I was going for. And you can always, if you're like, oh my god, I hate this, you could always pop, pop it back into the tumbler if you wanted, or you could use, like, if you have it on hand, you could use a pickle pot um, and kind of clean it up that way. I'm using a steel brush head on a rotary, like, um, Dremel tool, and you can see this is taking off the uh, oxidation from all the high points. On the feather which I think is a really great way to show off especially right here like oh I could watch this all day I just love watching it like a it's like wa watching an archaeologist you know uh, you know discover a relic almost <laughs> just pulling out all of those details and I'm not pressing too hard and it's a pretty gnarled up rotary head but uh, here I'm going through with a steel bristled brush it's much slower but it also gives me a lot more control over how much of that antiquing that I'm actually removing um, because I, I you know don't want it if I wanted it completely shiny I'd have saved myself the work and just put it back in the tumbler you know but uh yeah I really like how that comes out and you can see how the antique settled into some like the grooves and stuff so now this is a moonshine cloth and I'm just going through and kind of buffing up the surface. You could go through with the different polishing heads and things and really get a true, bright, vibrant copper gleam. But I really liked the antique look on this one. You can see it just polishes up a little bit. This is also leaving a little, like there's some polishing compound imbued in this polishing cloth. But I also like to go through with just, just a touch of the Renaissance Wax, which is a microcrystalline polishing compound. And um, I find that it, it kind of sticks pretty well, but it, it's got a strong smell, so I put the cap back on. But it does a great job of uh, preserving and protecting the antique finish on your copper pieces. Hmm. But all of this stuff does wear off over time, but the good news is that it does polish right back up. Now this will turn your skin green if you wear it and you're very sensitive to like copper and stuff. Uh, but I am going through now with some 18 gauge para wire. Um, and this is for those of us who, you know, uh, we just like wire wrapping. <laughs> so whether you've bought or made um, your feather charm, you can follow along with me. I'm using the second to largest uh, node of my mandrel pliers and just doing two loops and then like three twist tie twists. To get a nice like twisted neck there and uh, turning one of the you know wrapping wires uh, straight down to almost behave like a spine down the back of the feather yeah I I don't know why but I always kind of think of a pendant as if it's a little person and the bale is the head and the the stone or the feather in this case is the body um, so we have that one piece coming down and then kind of right over if the pen, you know, if the bale is the head, this would be like, you know, the throat. Um, I'm making just a small little loop. And this is completely free st freestyle, so, I mean, <laughs> there's no wrong way to do this stuff. I just wanted to show you how I was going about it. Now here, uh, I wish I'd gotten a better look at that, but I had actually just opened up the back a little bit so that the, uh, the tail of the feather, the quill of it, I guess, um, would fit. A little nicer and I'm making that spiral just a little bit bigger to give us more surface area to hold on and you can see how that kind of just fits right up in there easier said than done <laughs> uh, and always feel free to use like tape or you know whatever you feel like you need to give yourself an extra set of hands but I've wrapped that wire now once around the feather and then I'm following through with the wire that we had used for this the spine for lack of a better term and now I'm using both of them to wrap simultaneously around the feather. Now, interesting enough, I've actually wrapped uh, feathers for like adding into like my hair and stuff in this same manner. Uh, <laughs> so it kind of works on whatever. You can also wrap like uh, skeleton keys. So again, I'm just repeating the same spiral as what we used a little further up, but with both wires. And now I've wrapped them around to meet at the front 
rub it out some pliers using flush cutters to give it a snip snip and then using our round nose pliers gripping the wire as close to the tip of the pliers and as close to the tip of the wire as we can and then it's kind of spiraling in the cute little spiral and now for here oh I wish I hadn't gone off frame sorry about that but you can see I just kind of framed the back curve of the spiral gave it a trim and I'm gonna do another spiral coming in from the other direction just like that now this is definitely a little bit more wobbly than what I want like you can see here how it wiggles a bit so I'm gonna come in with my round nose and just grabbing on both sides of the uh, wire if I just twist a bit it'll cinch down um, using my fingernails to open up the bail you could leave you know them closer together you could have also done I, I do two but three or four or even five uh, repetitions like coils for the bail can look really cool now here I'm using my bent nose pliers to uh, round that spiral so that it hugs more closely to the um, to the copper feather and then just giving it a good smush with my uh, nylon jaw pliers you could just as easily do the same thing just with your own fingers I've just found it's a little bit easier and then cinching down honestly wherever you feel like you might need some cinching go ahead and cinch it uh, because it's much worse to have it wiggle and fall apart on you so here I have a steel bench block that has like a rubber base but I flipped it over and I'm using the nylon head of a jeweler's hammer to just whack it uh, this is actually work hardening it it's compressing the the you know metal of the wire and making it more dense so it's less malleable um, and so you can see these resin cord copper pieces are lightweight but very durable like I was not holding back from hammering and it stills a bit of wiggle but not nearly as much as what it did have and that's how it came out hey y'all thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video i really hope that it was helpful to you if you have any questions comments or ideas please leave those down below um i'm sure i've mentioned this but there is a list of the tools and materials used uh down in the video description those are affiliate links so anything that you purchase through those links even if it's not the originally link originally linked item uh, that still greatly benefits our company if you would like to support the channel even further beyond you know liking sharing subscribing ringing my bell all that good stuff um, the, there is a link to our patreon where you can participate in behind the scenes content digital download content as well as our monthly craft along kits but we do have all those all that stuff up on Etsy as well too so lots of different options to uh, craft along and participate and just kind of support the general mayhem but I really wanted to thank you guys for making everything that we do here at Back to Earth Creations possible because it really wouldn't be the same without y'all. And um, I really look forward to crafting with y'all again in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye! <laughs>